DeepMind Retro Transformer model, Retrieval Enhanced Language model, cross attends trillions of tokens for state of the art of Wikitext 103 and the pile with 25 times fewer parameters. So hello, welcome back subscriber or newcomer. Uh, so I, I've read this paper, Retro Transformer, and I would like to give you sort of the juice, uh, the spice of the paper, sort of contents, ideas, links, uh, everything can be found on my uh, blog post uh, over here. And uh, as well, it's uh, I'm continuing my journey of learning machine learning. I'm sort of getting uh, recently. I started to feel a bit more confident. Uh, I read um, a decent amount of papers written on them on my blog. So uh, first, um, yeah, you can subscribe on my YouTube channel, uh, and as well, uh, uh, you can subscribe to my blog posts uh, uh, with, with your email. Uh, over here or on on the Twitter as well. I t t tweet the blog posts. So Retrieval Enhanced Transformer or uh, Retro is an autoregressive model. It's uh, from paper of DeepMind 2021. So this year improving uh, language models by retrieving from trillions of tokens. And what this uh, transformer does is that uh, you, as a an, as an input, you have a again a sequence. It's autoregressive, so it predicts, you know, it trains on language modeling to tries to predict uh, next uh, token, next token. So it uh, takes the input tokens, and uh, instead of uh, just passing them through transformer as we are used to, instead uh, the 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 tokens are first as well passed into the frozen bird transformer, which produces embedding. Embedding. This embedding is searched in the database, and in database we retrieve two chunks, and and, and the the second chunk sort of predicts what 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 we will see in the future. Then we do some encoder. And then we pass it to cross attention. So the output of the transformer is uh, then passed through several layers of this cross attention. And thanks to seeing, you know, uh, not only uh, using the transformers, this um, self attention and feed forward rail, which also serves a little bit like a memory. I had a post about that. And instead, we also cross attend on the large database. I don't know, billions of chunks, and then combine this all together to produce a prediction for the next token. So it conditions uh, on two, uh, two retrieved chunks. Uh, retrieved are based using bird similarity with preceding chunk, um, and uh, it is state of the art on Wikitech one and three and the pile uh, by a little bit. And it's uh, competitive on question answering, but it's uh, outperformed, uh, you know, it, uh, especially with, uh, I don't know, GPT-3, but uh, it's, uh, it has less parameters. Uh, the issue there is that it, uh, is, uh, it is uh, underperforming the state of the art on question answering for specialized models for that, uh, for that task. Uh, model performs even uh, when the low, the, when there is low train test overlap. So you know that's first thing you would think. Uh, you, you know, one if you are storing some sequences in your database and then you are searching them to predict what will be the next token. Obviously, there's super critical. What is the train test overlap? Is there some leakage? So they, they looked for this and even uh, even in uh, when controlling for this, they still were getting improvements uh, f uh, with uh, looking at the ablations and so on. Um, uh, retrieval uh, reduces uh, hallucinations and increases uh, interpretability. So in the hallucinations are reduced because we store a relatively long sequences around uh, 60 around 108 uh, words and of course the interpretability are improved because we retrieve from a database and we can then look what we retrieved. The part of the original transformer uh, is not interpretable. So this is not the first retrieval architecture. So historically uh, uh, for uh, retrieving it, 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 and currently we still use um, in, in many applications, we, uh, 
for example, I think Elasticsearch uh, has this BM25, and uh, historically we use this inverted index matching. Uh, it's a TF IDF scheme uh, where uh, we multiply frequency of the term in the document with the inverse uh, document frequency of the term, you know, term uh, as a present at least once in 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 the document uh, overall. And if, when we do this, uh, we can actually find, uh, we can actually look for words that were in the query in the database. Then uh, there was a uh, latent topic modeling, which uh, looked for uh, some underlying uh, hidden topics. It learned underlying hidden topics in the text and used that for uh, retrieval. I did uh, distance search for translation in 2008. There is this uh, paper that, that was referenced in the paper uh, from the DeepMind uh, that uh, you can use edit distance search uh, for translation. So during translation, you take the passage that you would like to translate, take a chunk that you would like to translate, you search in the database, look at translations that you remember using edit distance. And uh, all those candidates have some kind of uh, output uh, translation and then you use those to re-rank and make the uh, complete uh, the, 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 the original uh, translation that you want to do. As well there is this uh, KNN uh, language modeling from 2020 which uh, searches the current context that you are modeling and embedding in, in a database. So this is similar to this DeepMind Retro Transformer and then linearly interpolates with the predictions from uh, the results of the k nearest neighbor model. So uh, you have the transformer, then you have also the search, and then you do interpolation on predictions. So, and th there is a DPR a model 2020 uh, that trains one bird for keys and one bird for values and then uses contrastive loss to optimize this sort of search. I think a uh, variation of this DPR is a state of the art on question answering that the DeepMinds model was not able to uh, outcompete. And how is Retro different? Uh, Retro contra in contrast uses longer sequences. It uses cross attention, which allows for uh, multiple retrievals and uh, has a bigger database. Uh, it's uh, hundreds, uh, I think tens of billions of records approximately when I was estimating it. So in comparison to uh, Retro, we have also this sort of table. Let me increase the screen. Okay, we, we have also um, this table over here. So we can see that the, I think FID or MD a E M D R squared. Uh, D is out of the form on question answering. And yeah, the difference is so retrieval tokens, uh, sum of tokens stored in the database is uh, bigger. Uh, the granularity is different, it's chunk. So in other models, uh, sometimes in, instead we search on uh, the, the, the prompt, the entire prompt. But here we search some sort of chunks of the prompt. And um, it uses frozen bird for search, which is simplification. And uh, it uses chunked cross attention. Uh, I will say a bit more about that, but I, I will not go uh, completely into details. It would be better to then read the paper and in future the code. So what is the training data set for this model? So we have this uh, 10 lingual massive uh, text data set. I think this one was used also for the Gopfer paper, which I haven't uh, read, but it's some kind of a transformer variation. It uh, uses sentence speeds tokenizer, which is, you know, tokenization is this sort of compression of a text into a, a string of integers. And in this case, the sentence piece tokenizer has vocabulary of 120, 8k of tokens. Uh, it is uh, more and I think the reason why there is more of this is because it operates on uh, 10 languages. This massive, massive text data set is uh, 10 lingual. 
uh, retrieval database is 1.7 trillion tokens, uh, where one token is four characters, so it's approximately uh, one word, so it's approximately 1.75 trillion words. I think it's hundreds uh, of years of reading for human, uh, that, that kind of amount of text. So, uh, chunks are 64 token sequences, uh, and uh, if we uh, think about this, then this would tell us that the database of, uh, contains approximately 13 billion of records, I guess. It, I think it doesn't say in the paper. And they prevent during training, obviously, you cannot, uh, you know, if you would be able to retrieve directly from the same document, you, then you would uh, immediately see, you know, what the next token should be and then the learned uh, behavior would be trivial. So instead, uh, they, during training, they uh, prevent uh, from uh, retrieval from the same document on the database level, I think. So what is this massive text data set then? So it contains from, it's made up of web, books, news, Wikipedia, GitHub, and uh, yeah, from the, there's several languages, but books are only English, news is only English. You know, it contains code as well. It will be something we read uh, later. And it doesn't, I think, it lacks a little bit of math, which also seems to be visible in, in the future. All right, let's go to the architecture. So again, what the architecture is. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the token inputs, input tokens are split into chunks. Uh, the chunks are then used for retrieval using frozen bird. The frozen bird, uh, how, how does it, you know, what is the final vector that is actually searched? Well, it, it uses uh, time averaged. Uh, it uses time averaged uh, embedding, and that's it, it search using scan database. But we can look at it l later. So important is that once we do search chunks, we get the neighbors. Uh, th this happens actually during uh, the uh, the data set pipeline time. So we retrieve neighbors for each chunk and those chunks are then passed to encoder. You know, so the, the neighbors are just, uh, uh, you know, sentence piece encoded uh, texts, right? But now we would like to um, create vectors from them. And uh, one more thing, uh, one more thing to say is that uh, maybe I will mention it during the retrieval. But yeah, so um, so we get the neighbors. So for each chunk, we get several neighbors, uh, approximately ten neighbors. Uh, we pass them through encoder, which uh, works as a uh, condition, which conditions on on one hidden layer immediately after the trans transformer base and uh, produces encoded neighbors, which are then used for cross attention. But let's get back what kind of hidden uh, vectors are used for this conditioning I mentioned. So uh, firstly, we went through this one route, but then there is this another route through the model. So the chunks, uh, are made of, of the tokens and the input tokens are just embedded and then passed through a regular baseline transformer which has attention layers. But at some point we stop, uh, uh, right? Uh, 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 it's, there's just, you know, there's this vanilla uh, transformer, but then uh, we just stop using just uh, the transformer and then we start sort of incorporating this uh, retrieval block. How do we do this? So after this pass, uh, immediately after this pass, we extract uh, the hidden uh, representation which is passed to this uh, encoder, which uses cross attention to uh, sort of condition to, or sort of uh, modulate the retrieved neighbor encodings. And then, 
these uh, modulated retrieved uh, encodings are then uh, cross attended with the original within the original layers of the uh, transformer which now contains also context from uh, the retrieved uh, encodings and of course we have the feed forward and uh, you know it, it may sound a little bit weird to do this although yeah we know that uh, previously these approaches were successful but uh, they also did ablations and it, it obviously helps um, this retrieval helps all right let's go forward what exactly happens in the retrieval so the database is a key value memory of chunks uh, the primary uh, entity there is a chunk each value is composed of two consecutive chunks so that's around 128 tokens each key is the first chunk from the value that I mentioned so the second chunk sort of tells us if I search the first chunk what is the continuation what is the second chunk so key is the first chunk from the value and the, the embeddings are created tag, uh, so that the each uh, key uh, chunk uh, is passed through the PERT and averaged over time to produce an embedding then the key vectors are uh, for search stored in the database uh, the database is called uh, the scan similarity search uh, vector search uh, engine or database uh, you can find link over here so it has uh, performance improvement over for example uh, this NOA uh, database and the database contains around uh, you know two trillion tokens as I mentioned around 10 billion documents and they are able to cure it in 10 milliseconds it's still you know it's a uh, it's sort of like a GPU time 10 milliseconds it's not that fast but thing is that you can do this beforehand you can do this at the pipeline time at the input data set pipeline time because the part that is used there is frozen and the optimal number of neighbors is between 2 and 40 right what about this encoding of the retrieved neighbors right so we mentioned that we used you know after uh, after the input encodings go through the uh, the vanilla base transformer we then have uh, uh, extracted uh, hidden representations and they are used to modulate the retrieved uh, uh, retrieved embeddings and they are done this is done using cross attention where the corresponding query chunks are passed to this encoder they cross attend the retrieved chunks and output uh, is called uh, retrieval set so these are the encoded prepared neighbors then there is this chunked cross attention this chunked cross attention is where we incorporate the uh, the retrieval set the neighbors which we are encoded into the main pipeline of the model and because we are autoregressive we only take the previously uh, the previous chunk retrieval set which contains as a value something that tells us uh, about the future we add a relative position encodings uh, such that uh, we can then concatenate all, all the uh, retrieval set into tight dimension and uh, and use it in a presentation at the layer as a query and do the cross attention so again so uh, to explain again we have these chunks those uh, this green chunk is used to retrieve uh, green neighbors the green neighbors after encoding are passed to the cross attention and they cross attend with the next chunk uh, to produce 
to, to, to produce output which is used for the language modeling. And how, how do you actually do this cross attention? As I mentioned, we do concatenation in time dimension of those embeddings and do position encoding such that uh, they would be relevant for each chunk. So what about the retro results? So it's state of the art on Wikitext and the pile. On the pile with seven billion parameters, it outperforms Jurassic and GOPFOR models. And it strongly outperforms on GitHub. Maybe it's because it's a little bit repetitive data set and it is, it is present in the massive text. Uh, so if you look at this image here, uh, we can see that on GitHub, this orange line is very high. So the improvement of the retro model is very good. Uh, in contrast, if we look at the performance on the Hacker News, uh, this sort of a general discussion text. Uh, so it only weakly outperforms the Gopfer and Jurassic, which are uh, also, uh, you know, two orders of magnitude more parameters. And uh, then, unfortunately, on math, uh, data set, this retro is very weak, potentially because um, the, maybe the text requires more generalization, but as well, maybe not much math is included in the text and then the retrieved neighbors are not as uh, useful. What uh, we observe uh, in the results is that the generated text is uh, more coherent and on topic, uh, probably thanks to the long memories. If we think about it, the chunks themselves are 128 tokens at 128 uh, words. So uh, you would expect if you would have this kind of large context, examples of large context, which are very similar to what you are trying to generate next, you would expect that it would behave like this, that it would be more coherent and uh, on topic. So it, they also demonstrate this on, on this example uh, where in, in case of retrieval is turned off, I can easily turn off and turn on the retrieval because the database is sort of an addition and it, you can turn it off and that's how they do ablations. So if you look at the example of the, where the retrieval is off, it's about beavers. And however, the, the language model immediately switches to some other topic and starts talking about frogs and how the frogs live in the water and how they camouflage from predators and so on. Which is not uh, as uh, probably usual you would see in human text. Instead, the uh, retro transformer uh, it stays on the topic about beavers and uh, generates uh, about them um, building dams in the riverbeds and uh, saying that they have uh, strong teeth and uh, strong jaws and cut down trees and branches to build their homes and so on. And all right, so uh, this is encouraging, these are nice results. What's not so excellent are the results on question answering uh, data sets. So over there, uh, the Specialized models, which also I think use some kind of a retrieval. Yes, I think so. We mentioned that at the beginning they use these non frozen key value searches, but they append to the prompt instead of using chunk crossed attention. So this FID uh, achieves 54, but the retro, uh, the, the biggest one, only achieves 45. So it's it's not bad, it's uh, competitive, but it's not uh, state of the art uh, on natural language uh, questions. Natural questions is probably some data set. On Wikidata, we can look quickly at the uh, perplexities on Wikitext and there we can see that it's very strong outperformance uh, when we train on massive text. Uh, but when we train on Wikipedia only, it uh, performs similarly to previous uh, recent models. 
So right uh, now at the live section, what do you do when you know this uh, retro architecture? How do you use this? Uh, what kind of ideas can you use it for? So you can you can apply this into your own pre-trained transformer, and it, this is described in in the paper. You can add a and train chunked cross attention by appending it at the end. Um, uh, so chunk cross attention and the encoder and uh, the database you, you append it and um, of course you will need to tune the number of uh, neighbors uh, that you want to retrieve and uh, a couple other parameters uh, there is this section retrofitting baseline models in in the paper the retro source code i think it's not published i haven't found in paper okay thank you very much if you'd like uh, you can subscribe you can subscribe as well on the youtube and uh, i was happy to tell you this and i hope to to see you in the future as well see you